Hey everyone, it's David with Streaming Relativity, home of the Astro DNA Observatory, and I have a quick video for everyone today, and it's about the moon. And I woke up this morning with some terrific news that the folks at Intuitive Machine successfully landed on the surface of the moon. This is the you know, first private uh, uh, spacecraft to do that. And uh, it's the first time we've done it since uh, Apollo 17 in 1972. So this is a wonderful ac accomplishment. And, you know, it's very exciting. Congrats to NASA. Congra you know, congrats to the uh, IM uh, team for, for, this, uh, for this achievement. And, you know, the moon is probably the most uh, famous celestial body. And... Um, Everybody knows it, and, and in fact, we've probably looked at, the, as humans, we probably look at the surface of the moon more than any other celestial body. Um, everybody can look up in the sky and, and point to it, and, um, and it never ceases to amaze people. Um, but as an astrophotographer, you know, many of, us, many of us kind of view the moon as an enemy because, you know, because of moonshine, and it's not the kind you drink, it's the kind that interferes with your photography, especially deep sky objects, when you're trying to image deep sky objects, and, you know, and I think that's a, you know, thinking about that, I think it's a really unfair rap to throw at the moon. The moon is uh, an awesome, you know, an awesome satellite, and um, I, I grew up in New York City, you can guess which borough, but... I never visited the Empire State Building. I never uh, went to the Statue of Liberty, and I, that seems really bizarre to me um, as an older as an older person thinking about the fact that I never took advantage of those those uh, uh, features of New York City. Uh, so the moon is kind of like that too uh, for astrophotographers. It's there, and not all of us take the time to, to image it. So. In honor of the landing, uh, early uh, well, uh, in, in honor of the mission, uh, earlier this week on February twentieth, I you know I, I had a rare uh, clear sky in February, and and I said, oh, this would be terrific, but the moon was fairly illuminated, about eighty eight percent illuminated um, in its uh, waxing gibbous state, and um, I wasn't going to let that uh, disappoint me or, or ruin the evening. And so I decided to uh, do an ad hoc session and just grab a bunch of frames on the moon. And um, now it's very unusual for me to, you know, to do these uh, uh, unprepared. I, I rarely image unless I've spent a good deal of time, you know, preparing. Anybody who follows the channel uh, gets that and knows that about me. But uh, I just shot from the hip. I literally just pointed my uh, AstroTech uh, 115EDT telescope with the ASI 2600mm Pro camera attached. So I just literally pointed it at the moon. Whatever filter was in there, it was, it was actually an HA filter from some um, uh, work I was doing on a, uh, on a nebula. Uh, I didn't even refocus the camera. I just fired off 50 exposures at 0. .0005 seconds and a gain of zero and an offset of 50. And you know, funny enough, I don't even have calibration library. Uh, I don't have files in my calibration library for those settings. And you know what? I didn't care. I just wanted to shoot the moon and uh, see what it looked like. And I have to tell you, it was really exciting to see the frames rolling in um, because the moon is is fascinating. And um, so this morning, uh, after uh, after getting the news of the successful landing last night and, you know, reading through the article, so why don't I go ahead and see what, what I got there and let me process some of that data. And I have to tell you, um, I really like the outcome. And I'm also going to tell you that uh, this was the least stressful, quickest process I've, I've, I've been through in a while. And, and, um, you know, despite not being prepared, not having ideal uh, um, conditions for, for for shooting the moon, not having the right rig in place, it is really easy to get cool pictures and process them uh, uh, of the moon. And I'm going to share with everybody today how I did that, and, and maybe we'll even take a little tour of the moon. Um, so listen... If you are into astronomy and you like astrophotography, then this is a channel for you. We, uh, we, I, I publish at least once a week, and uh, we've got a really cool community that's forming here, and I think you'll like it. So go ahead and subscribe, and uh, you'll get notifications every time I publish a video. All right, with that, the plug for the channel is done. Let's go ahead and take a, take a look at how we, how we can go, go about getting pictures of the moon. 
Ah, the moon. Here we go. So we're going to start with the um, uncropped, final stacked image of the moon. This has been stretched, and uh, the only processing that was done to this was just a, a, a touch of unsharp mask. Um, and again, I'll, I'll emphasize that uh, I didn't even focus my uh, rig, and I used an HA uh, hydrogen alpha filter, and uh, this is a stack of 50. So my point here is that it's actually really easy and fast to get what I believe to be really impressive images of the moon. And so uh, the thing to keep in mind is that the moon is very bright, so you, you're not talking about long exposures like we do in deep sky imaging. We're talking very, very, very short exposures. In fact, a lot of people image the moon using video cameras, uh, really high frame refresh um, systems, and they, and they gather hundreds, if not thousands, of images of their subject, of their planet or their moon, and then they go through a stacking process. And there's a lot of specialized software out there specifically for planetary stacking and lunar stacking. But I'm also going to say that there's no reason why you can't use free utilities like Cyril and do this really quickly. And in fact, let's just jump into Cyril right now. We're going to do it together just so you can see how easy this is. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my, uh, in, in Cyril, uh, I'm going to set my workspace to a temp workspace. And uh, you can see I've already done some work, but we're going to redo it all. Um, I set it to temp only because I, I, I really didn't treat this session as a, as a serious um, um, uh, imaging session. And, uh, but I'll tell you, I'll probably convert this to a, a proper workspace um, uh, after this video because I am pleased with the results. So the very first thing that we're going to do in Cyril is we're going to take our raw files, and uh, you, you know, if you follow the channel, you know that I, I have a methodical way of gathering my data. So I have a target called the Moon, and this was on the twentieth um, of February, and you can see that I have um, the FITS files. There will be fifty in total, and we're going to grab them, and we're just going to add these FITS files to our conversion routine add. Okay, so um, remember 0 0.0005 seconds of exposure, gain of zero, offset of 50. I'm going to do zero calibration here. I'm simply going to convert this to a sequence I'm going to call, let's just call it lunar, because I, I ran it as moon before, and we won't confuse the files. So we're going to convert this, and uh, this is a very straightforward process, and, and it's already done. Now, note that the first image in the sequence is appearing. And uh, there's some stretching going on uh, for the view. Um, uh, but this is showing up a as a linear image. Um, and uh, it's fascinating. This is what the camera was grabbing. Now, I didn't shoot this at night. Well, it was evening. It was early evening, though. So the, 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 there was still sunlight in, in the sky as well. And... Um, uh, I I just think it's amazing. You can <laughs> you can shoot anytime you want, uh, but you just have to adjust your your camera setting. So for me, point zero 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 five was the answer. And so now that we've converted all, and we can open up this frame list and take a look. I didn't even bother to do this. We can we can kind of blink through this just to see if there's any any. Uh, you can see the variations that we're seeing as it's getting darker or in the evening or what have you. But, you know, you see a little bit of movement back and forth of the moon because I wasn't even tracking. Uh, you know, I wasn't even tracking. So th this is 50 exposures in rapid succession. But you're going to have just a little bit of, uh, I guess, a little bit of movement here. So there are our frames. We're going to skip calibration. I don't have darks. I don't have flats for this. I'm not going to bother. So we're just going to go ahead and register, but this time the method that we're going to use for registration, normally we'll, you know, you'll see me when I'm doing um, um, uh, DSOs, deep sky objects, you'll see me using either global star alignment when I've stacked for comets or other things, I'll, I'll use different, different techniques. But for this, this is a, uh, I, I chose um, a planetary full disk 
uh, image pattern alignment. And when you do that, the, what you need to do is you need to select uh, a region. And that's not the region I'm going to want. You need to select the region that you want to do your alignment on. So here's the region that I'd like to do uh, the registration on. So now we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll register these. And it's going to go ahead and process. And uh, it's already done its processing. It's quite fast. And it took about five seconds to process 50 images. So now we have these images that have been aligned against each other. And guess what? We're going to go to stacking. And then we're going to call this, well, let's just call this our lunar stack. Right? Because we stacked with, uh, uh, I, I want to differentiate from what I've already produced. And we'll start stacking. And this should take just a minute. And there we go. The stack is done. Show me my stack. <laughs> Bingo. And there we have it. We already have a stacked image. And it already looks amazing. So if we, in fact, go to a... Um, we can uh, go to a... Uh, uh, Full image size, uh, a little bit trickier. Let's see if we can do that. Let's go back this way. No, we'll, we'll, we'll actually just take this out of here. So now, a couple of things. If you, if you like this image as it is already, you can always just save a quick thumbnail of it by uh, up here, the little camera icon. You can save this out uh, to uh, a local file. Now, it won't be a high res image, but it will be as it is stretched here. What I do is I just save the file out to a, um, uh, a FIT file or a, t or a TIFF file. It's up to you. It, you can save it to a FITS file if you're going to pull it into PixInsight, or you can save it out to a TIFF file if you're going to stretch it in something like GIMP. So why don't we go ahead and I'll, I'll just save this out as a TIFF file. And uh, we'll go ahead. Okay, got it. So now we have uh, this file uncropped on, uh, on disk. By the way, you can also do some processing here if you wanted to either rotate or um, you wanted to crop this image. Uh, there are options for that and rotate and crop would be it. So for example, if you wanted to rotate this to align it uh, to some perspective that you prefer, you could, or if you wanted to crop the image, you could always you can always choose a crop um, and 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 then save it out. So there's a little bit of image processing that you could do here in Serial if if you chose to. But I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and let's launch GIMP. And GIMP is a free tool. You don't need to use GIMP. You can use anything you want. Um, but you can use PixInsights if you like for this. But I'm going to go ahead and launch GIMP and and we'll go ahead and drag that that uh, lunar TIFF that lunar TIFF file, that lunar uh, uh, TIFF file into, let's see if we can't just grab it and drag it and drop it. Let's see if it lets us do that. So we're dragging and dropping. We'll convert it to this space. Eek, looks like GIMP recovered from a crash. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so we have a linear stack, and, 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 and look, it's, you don't see a thing. Of course you don't. You have to stretch it. So uh, stretching is really simple in, uh, in GIMP. You can go to uh, Colors, and then you can use a, a histogram uh, a levels, which is essentially a histogram stretch. All I'm going to point out for everybody here is that the signal is way over here. I'm talking way over here. So this is a really compressed signal uh, for obvious reasons. So, you know, we're going to we're going to be here for quite some time, you know, just doing this stretch over and over again. So um, let's go ahead and keep doing this. And uh, I'm not going to uh, spend an, uh, a lot of time on stretching because, uh, you know, there there are many videos out there that talk about stretching, but I'm going to get it going just so you can see. And then we're going to we're going to we're going to pop into uh into another uh, another tool, which I'm going to pop into. I'll probably pop into PixInsights real quickly to show you a final step. May not even need to do that. We could probably get away with doing it uh, all in GIMP. So let's see. You know, this will be. We'll do this together.
Okay, so here we have what seems to, f what feels like a, a cool lunar stretch. And um, this is a little bit lighter than the uh, image that I'm going to share in a bit. I'm, and again, this is personal preference, how far you take this. And, uh, but there is additional processing that you can apply to this. You could, if you really want to play with a little bit with shadows and highlights, you can. So this is going to start to play with some of the contrast that you have. And uh, you can also, um, you can run an unsharp mask on this, I think. Let's take a look. Okay, so we can use a, a little bit of Unsharp Mask on this, and uh, we'll get to preview the result of it. Um, so let's take a look at this before. And this is just the standard uh, radius of 3 and amount of 0.5. Width. Not terrible. And we could always rotate if we wanted to. And we'll do a final kind of curves transformation here. We'll export this. I probably, we'll export this as a um, into our workspace. We'll we'll make this a JPEG. Okay, and then we can take a peek at it and see what we got. Okay, here we are viewing the final outcome from the process that we just went over in the video. And this is a, in Microsoft, uh, I guess, their Photos uh, application. And it's the JPEG file that we exported from uh, GIMP. And uh, you saw that uh, essentially this was taking uh, a stack from Cyril, doing some stretching to get the signal exposed. Um, all that we did was a very, very slight unsharp mask to, you know, sharp, basically to create um, a little better contrast uh, in some of the areas um, of the craters and the mountain ranges and so on. And uh, then I just oriented it a little bit differently um, to align more with some, there's some popular um, websites out there that illustrate some of the features of the moon and this is not an atypical crop for it. Now this is one view of it and I and this is a, a I'm going to show you the view that I did this morning which is a, a different view and immediately you see that this is a much darker um, uh, the, you know uh, 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 image and I did that intentionally I, I kind of I kind of like it, uh, but this is my, this is me. It, it, it uh, I just like the, I just like the darkness, uh, uh, you know, for the areas that are not illuminated and some of the detail here. Now, the only other difference here is I didn't, I didn't crop or rotate this one, and um, instead of using GIMP for the unsharp mask, I, I used uh, unsharp mask in Pix Insights. And so this is really a matter of personal preference. You, you, know, you, you decide which one you like. Actually, put in the comments below which one that you like better. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the final part of this video, I'm going to go through using the, uh, we'll use the image that we created together. I'll go ahead and I'll highlight some of the cool uh, features of the moon. Okay, so here we have a beautiful image of the moon. And whenever I look at the moon, there are probably four characteristics that that I'm drawn to right away or distinguishing 
um, um, uh, appearances on the moon that that catch my eye, and and the first would be those really dark areas that seem to be very smooth, and in fact, you know, they're 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 Mars or seas. They're called seas because in ancient times, when people would look at the moon and see those dark, smooth areas, we just assumed that that they were they were water or seas, but they're not. They're actually evidence of ancient lava flows from volcanic activity that you know has hardened out and smoothed out. So, so uh, these are the seas, and and you know there are many featured in this picture, and and um, we're not going to go through all of them, but I will. I'll bring our attention to uh, perhaps one of the more famous ones, which is uh, Mar Imbrium, and uh, or the Sea of Showers um, is a, a no, another name for it. And that area, it's in the top left corner of the of the of this photo. That area is about 340,000 square miles in size. So that's a pretty big area. And uh, I picked this one because uh, not only it's famous, but there are a lot of famous landmarks near it. And so that brings me to a second characteristic of the moon that I noticed right away, which are these really bright, jutted areas, often right near the Mars. Um, these are the highlands. These are um, these, these you know bright mountain ranges, let's call them. And they serve as a really interesting contrast to the Mars, right? Because they're 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 jagged. They're they've got texture and they and they stand out and they're bright often and uh, and and actually uh, Mar Imbrium is surrounded by uh, several of these mountain ranges uh, with maybe one of the most famous is uh, Mount Apennines and um, that's on its southeast border and these mountains probably formed. A long time ago, maybe four billion years ago, we estimate three point eight, what what have you, um, and uh, they were formed from an asteroid, which is what probably caused the volcanic activity in the Mar Imbrium. Uh, uh, an asteroid hit that area and kind of just heaved, you know, a huge portions of the moon's crust upwards and uh, formed this kind of perimeter of mountains around uh, Imbrium. So. You know, that is what uh, Apennines uh, is, Mount Apennines uh, is. And this is a 600-kilometer stretch, this one piece. So to give you an idea of, of scale. Um, speaking of impacts, um, that's the third characteristic that sticks out for me, and maybe the first for most others. And those are these impact craters that kind of pock the entire surface of, of the moon. And some areas are, you know, much more densely populated, um, like when you look far south in the moon. And in other areas, it seems like these craters happen in isolation. And um, one of the most famous uh, craters, I, I think, on the moon is uh, Copernicus. And uh, again, near, uh, actually sitting in between uh, two seas uh, on the moon. Uh, it's in between Mar Imbrium and Mar Insularum. And uh, this is about 800 million years old, this, this crater. And it was likely formed by another, probably a partial asteroid hit. And um, it's a whopping 90 kilometers in diameter. And it's 2.4 miles deep. You know, so this is a big, <laughs> this is a big crater, and uh, you know it was formed by a very violent event, and that leads me to uh, this final feature that I I have always noticed uh, on the moon, and that's these bright linear. Uh, um, lines or, or, or rays that seem to originate at the center of the crater and go out radially, or radially in all directions, and and this is eject, this is ejected mass, and it's evidence of how violent these events are on the moon, and you can see them um, all over the place, including um, uh, 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 radiating, radiating out of uh, Copernicus. Now, this photo has literally hundreds, perhaps a thousand different features of the moon that we could talk about. And we could spend a, a years, uh, a career, uh, just imaging the moon. And in fact, you know, given how accessible the moon is to us um, as amateur astronomers, uh, you know, th this is just a terrific target for astrophotography, one that you know, uh, perhaps deserves a little more attention from me. Okay, folks, let's call that a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, on this very quick from the hip shot of the moon uh, for a completely unplanned 
session uh, with the wrong gear and the wrong timing, I have to say the outcome was pretty awesome. And it definitely served the purpose that I had in mind, which is to celebrate our return to the lunar surface. And uh, I actually had a lot of fun with this video. So congratulations to the Intuitive Machine Team and NASA. Job well done. And uh, for those of you who like the video and you're into astronomy, astrophotography, go ahead, subscribe. It doesn't hurt. And you'll get notifications every time I publish new content. And with that, I will see you all on the next video.